I'm Mark Canoe. You may have seen me in such fine quality chemistry educational videos as It Came From The Lab or What's In That Tackle Box? Today I want to show you another way uh, that you can visualize what's happening for a chemical reaction. And for some people they can read this and they can understand that quite easily. But not everybody is made the same. Not everybody learns the same God made us differently. So we're going to look at it another way. Another way maybe perhaps to think in three dimensional, think in the mind's eye if you will. Uh, being a little bit artistic if you will on this. So here's what we're going to Here's what we are going to do. We are going to burn carbon and oxygen and we're going to make carbon monoxide out of it. Ooh, yeah. Now that's not exactly a fun thing to inhale because that is kind of poisonous to us. Uh, CO happens to bind with the red blood cells that go to our lungs and the red blood cell isn't exactly intelligent enough to tell if it's O2 or CO. And carbon and oxygen are kind of really, really close to each other on the periodic table. So, kids, don't do this at home. That would be a stupid idea. Okay? All right. So, here we go. We're going to go ahead and we're going to make these two black circles to represent our two carbons. And we are going to have our red circles are red circles here. Now there's only one of them, you may notice, okay? Because here we have the two, our coefficient two, that tells us there's two separate carbon atoms. Here we have one, just one O2, so we've got the two add oxygen atoms put together. So that's what we have here. And again, this is what's going on in a chemistry, in a chemical reaction, okay? Now, somehow, in this process, there's energy that's involved, things get broken apart, things get put back together again. Such is the chemical thug's way of life, if you will. So, here's what we have at the end. We're going to have one carbon and one oxygen together. But notice we're going to have two of them. So that's what it's going to look like here. That's what it's going to look like, ladies and gentlemen. And that's the final product. Now, again, you don't have to use circles to represent the atoms. That's fine. I, I did. You could use triangles. You could use squares. Get creative. Use a polygon. Oh, my gosh. Put something to use in chemistry that you learned in geometry. Oh, oh. okay. Any questions? Of course not. Okay, let's move on. Let's take a look at this one. This one's a little bit more complex because we're rusting that metal. Woo, yeah. So here we have two irons plus three oxygens. Okay, and something is not right with this equation. Notice it is not exactly balanced. I have two Fe's over here and I've got three oxygens and I've got three times two, six. This is not going to fly. We need to change something and we're going to have to go and put a two in front of here. So that'll give us our two times three, six oxygens and our three times two, six oxygens. We need to change this immediately. So we're going to make that four Fe's plus three O2's gets us two Fe2O3's, okay? Always, always important to start out with that balanced reaction because it does make things a lot simpler. And for some students, they may think, well, okay, I, okay, I understand balancing numbers, like the Fe same as Fe here, and the O's here the same as the O's on this side, but how does this all go together? What are we talking about here about chemical reactions? Why is it so important? Well, I'll let you in a little secret. It's important because your lives depend on it. We have chemical reactions breaking down, building up, going on all the time in our human bodies. Our bodies are like a machine capable of taking the raw materials, think food and liquids, and we can repair ourselves. Ooh. 
Snap. Was that God that rigged it? Yeah, it was. It was. So let's take a look at this here for a moment. I'm going to use blue to represent the iron. So I've got four of them, okay? I've got four blue spheres right here. I got four blue spheres, and notice I've got three O2s. I'm gonna have a little bit of fun. I'm gonna represent them with a red triangle. So I'm gonna have a triangle here, triangle here, and another, another couple of triangles here, boom. And another triangle's here. So I got one, two, three O2s. Each triangle is one oxygen plus these four FEs, they, notice how separate they are, okay? We can separate it like this, one, two, three, four, and we can separate these, one, two, three. That's why it's important to have that number there to help do the balancing act. All right, what is this going to look like, this two FE203? Well, let's see. We'll have a little bit of fun. I'm only going to approximate what the molecule will actually look like. But uh, imagine, if you will, that we're going to have two of these irons together, okay, like this, and we're just going to have three triangles like this. like this. So they're combining. These are two These are two separate Fe2O3s. There's my two Fe's, right? Right here, one and two. And then at three oxygens, one, two, three. Now somebody might be saying, whoa, 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 there's six. I counted two times three is six oxygens and two times two Fe's, that there's gonna be four of them. Well, yeah, totally. Right, one, two, three, four irons, we're good there. One, two, three, four, five, six oxygens, that's right. But the key thing when you look at this is how are they arranged? That's the idea, okay? When you stop and think about it, all the things that we know of, they're made up of the same basic building blocks. Look at living things, your same basic building blocks, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. You can throw in nitrogen and throw in a bunch of other elements, but let's just deal with carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. Every living thing has them in one form or another and in one amount or another, okay, in different amounts. But the reality is it doesn't do you any good unless you know how it's put together. That's the key thing. For all the technology we have, we cannot grow, we cannot reproduce, we cannot create the human kidney. We can't. We always have to get it from a donor. Always. And it has to match in terms of blood type because, oh wow, you don't want to go put somebody else's kidney into your body and your body rejects it and sees it as a foreign invader. Ooh, that's a whole other issue. So you see, oh my gosh, oh snap, this is where chemistry goes into biology and human anatomy. Okay, so let's recap this. So here, we're looking at the idea, we see a chemical equation, and we're seeing what does it visualize? What does that look like? So here's two carbon uh, atoms, we've got one O2 atom, and we burn the babies, and burn those babies, those atoms, if you will, and we got two COs, two carbon monoxides. Okay, yeah, really bad, bad stuff. Okay, over here, we've got four individual irons, three individual O2s, you can count those up for a total of six. Then we got two Fe2O3s, we're getting rust, and here it is, here's one Fe2O3, here's another Fe2O3, each one having one, two irons, okay, and one, two, three oxygens. Hey, I'm hoping that this video uh, will benefit you guys. Good luck and take care.